putting yourself first. That's a healthy thing. It's called survival. <laughs> We've like lost the fact that we are primal beings who do function by surviving because we have everything fed to us. We have delivery services. We have all of these things that are so easy. We forget that our bodies are still in, in survival mode. You know, I, I remember when I learned that, um, every time we, we look at our cell phone and something stresses us out, our, our bodies go into fight or flight. It is no, it is no difficult. It is, um, it is no different from a lion being in front of us. That's wild. That's wild. It's, I, it's something that blows my mind because we're put, we as a society, we're putting all these people and all these things, our work, our families, our um, partners, our friends in front of our own health. And that's, and that's so counterintuitive to what our bodies need. I like that you put it that way too, because, you know, a lot of people know the right information, but it's the application. And it's almost like you have to ground that knowing into your body. Like for me, it's all about embodiment to go, yeah, like I'm allowed to take care of myself first, <laughs> you know, because I am, like you said, I love that, the survival, mm -hmm. um, you know, and our body's an animal that is designed to survive and thrive in all conditions. Mm -hmm. So to really kind of catch the rest of us up with that is important um, part of you know, because I, I remember I would tell people to dance. They'd be like, oh, I dance every day. I'm like, if you danced every day, you would have such a magnetism to you. You would be in such great shape. So they just say that or like, oh, I know that. It's like, well, you're not doing it. So how can you have an idea of whether it's worth what it's saying? Exactly. And that's where the journaling comes in that we use a habit tracker. It's super simple, you know, um, I personally will use a calendar and just like make an X. Like I'm, I've committed to a hundred days of meditating. And um, so I just put an X on it and that's my 1% better for myself right now. A hundred days of meditating. And honestly, for me, everything else kind of just follows. Um, but at this point, because I've spent four years building, building healthy habits, um, nothing happens overnight. Um, except sleep, hopefully. <laughs> but I think that that's really cool what you said um I'm I'm interested in I'm interested in people's perspectives on putting themselves first because a lot of people are like that's so selfish and my response is is it because are you able to are you able to pour from an empty cup if you are teach me how <laughs> No, we, we definitely believe over here on the pod, our podcast that self-love, self-care, health, I mean, the holistic healing arts, we are all about wanting to know every which way how we can do that and support it. And it's different for everyone. I mean, what you said a little bit while, a little bit back in this conversation about self-care, I don't know, something just clicked for me is like, obviously like movement is self-care, like that's in my head eating is self-care that's in my head but then like thinking it on like a work perspective or like anything at that not just like these two things or sleep you know like okay yeah like a question of like how can I love myself in this moment or like how can I self-love myself in this moment instead of sitting on okay I've watched enough tv like what can I do next to self-love myself instead of just in get deeper and deeper in that hole because um so I just loved that perspective and it kind of like clicked something into me that when I am feeling in a a rut or not creative and I need to be creative to like ask okay well how can I self-love myself how can I self-care myself which then should you know momentumly go into my creativity it's mm. kind of what you're saying too right <laughs> absolutely and what you just reminded me of something one of my clients said um, she said, oh, self-care is learning how to do something today to make my tomorrow easier. Mm -hmm. And I thought that, that was brilliant. My, I mean, the best things come from my clients. 
I I just love listening to them being like, say more things, please. (laughs) Their their revelations are really exciting. And it's my job as a coach to point out that they're, that they're learning to change their mindset, that they are changing their, um, I mean, I have a client who messages me every time she sets a boundary with someone and that's so cool. It's really cool because three, four months ago, she was like, I'm not creative when we met. I'm not creative, creative at all. (laughs) lies lies lying to herself people telling her her whole life that she's not creative that she's um a math person turns out she's a beautiful writer mm-hmm. absolutely beautiful poet and and um soon to be novelist so yeah so once again those stories that we hold in our minds oh i can't do this oh this is my only type of of method this is this was my modality so if i'm not doing this modality then i'm not an artist um, how do we move away from that? And how do we take care of ourselves to release some of those thought patterns and then make tomorrow easier? The episode isn't quite over yet, listeners. Or YouTubers. If you haven't given us a like, subscribed, left us a review, or commented on any platform, we would really appreciate you showing us some love here at the Magical Holistic Healing Arts. And remember, Kangen Water and our grab bag for the podcast. Thanks so much for listening and stay vibrant out there.